The ancient city of Petra is Jordan's most famous cultural monument. Carved out of sandstone some 2,000 years ago, it was once the legendary capital of the Nabataeans. The greatest challenge facing the city of Petra in those days was keeping residents supplied with water during the long, hot, dry summers. The Nabataeans developed a unique water management system that included long channels carved into the rock, which directed water from the reservoirs and springs and transported it into the city. Archaeologists today are still impressed by the technical expertise of this ancient people. The Nabataeans not only chiseled out channels in the rock, they also set up huge dams and turned caves into reservoirs. They even had separate conduits for drinking water and water for the animals. Even in modern times, ensuring a sufficient water supply is still a major challenge for the Jordanian capital, Amman. Jordan is one of the most arid countries in the world. The water tanks located on top of the houses are vital, as there's no continuous supply of drinking water. In Jordan, water is strictly rationed. The German development organization GTZ says climate change and a growing population have exacerbated the problem in and around Amman. There's strong economic growth here, and as a result of regional ties, we also have more people moving to Jordan from neighboring countries. They all need water, which places even greater pressure on the water supply. The scarcity of water is not the only problem. It also has to be transported to where it's needed. Most of the country's water comes from the Jordan Valley, parts of which are 400 meters below sea level. It's a long, steep road from here to the capital, Amman. There's a 1,400-meter difference in altitude. All the water has to be pumped from here to there for millions of people, not just small villages. It's a huge technical challenge involving enormous energy consumption. We drive along the road that leads from the Jordan Valley to Amman, the pump road, as it's known. The GTZ and the German Development Service have inspected 11 of the water pumping stations along this road. The result of their analysis? With the right modifications, power usage at many of the stations could be more than halved. So you are switching them on and off, or...? Yeah, we're it here. Most of the water pumps here are extremely old and real power guzzlers. How much water...? They consume 14 percent of the country's available energy, most of which comes from fossil fuels. The Water Authority is the largest energy consumer and CO2 producer in the country. And that's partly a matter of organization. The pumping stations pump the water no matter what the consumption is. There is always a demand for water, but demand drops at night. The water tanks on top of the houses are full. People go to bed, but the pumps carry on. It would save huge amounts of energy if they were switched off. As part of the International Climate Initiative, German experts are now helping make the system more efficient. This pumping station is a pilot project. It provides drinking water to around 50,000 people in the nearby city of Salt. A delegation has been sent by the government in Amman to take a look at the technical changes that have been introduced. The biggest innovation are the new pumps from Germany, which use over 30 percent less power than the previous models, which are now being decommissioned. We're entering new territory. Increasing the energy efficiency of the pumping stations with modern technology and improved operation has never been done before. We first have to win our partners' confidence with this pilot project to show that it really works. 
The pilot project alone is expected to reduce the station's carbon emissions by around 15,000 tons a year. Thanks to the lower energy costs, the pumps will have paid for themselves in about two to three years. The new pumping station is inaugurated with a traditional ceremony. The German experts and engineers take advantage of the opportunity to speak to the Secretary General of Jordan's Water Authority and convince him of the need to modernize more of the country's 200 pumping stations. The Jordanian Water Authority uses huge amounts of electricity, which costs us millions every year. If this project is successful, we could significantly reduce our energy costs. We could then use those savings to tackle other urgent problems in the water sector. The Jordanians are particularly interested in the financing of the project. The pumps are supplied by the German manufacturer Vilo, free of charge. In return, the company will then receive part of the energy costs that are saved. The GTZ is hoping that the model will catch on elsewhere in Jordan. The GTZ is acting as an honest broker, which is important, because when discussing these innovative approaches with policymakers here, they have to know that we're not just trying to sell them something. We return to the ancient city of Petra. Archaeologists here are still in the process of discovering new elements in the Nabataeans' water management system. One thing modern Jordan can learn from its ancestors, their advanced civilization was only able to flourish in the middle of the desert because they learned how to make optimum use of the resources available.